Well, our, fi our Final Fantasy 7 journey is almost at an end. I played through 7OG, I played through the compilation, I've even read On the Way to a Smile, and the kids are alright. I know everything, except for Before Crisis, I don't know anything about that one. But I do have people in chat that will fill me in. Uh, by people, I mean Flash. If you want to see all of my time with Final Fantasy 7, my first playthrough of Remake, or my time with the compilation, there's a link in the description to a playlist with all of my Final Fantasy uh, videos in. So if you want to see my time with any of those games, or any of the other Final Fantasies, then do. We'll be playing Final Fantasy 8 after this one, so that'll be fun. Anyway, I think we better get started and see what I think of Final Fantasy VII Remake after playing the OG and the compilation. So, let's go. What the fuck? Where the fuck is Goblin's Bar? What is that? Oh god, it's Loveless Avenue, isn't it? Oh no. Oh no! This is gonna be a whole new, whole new game for me. Here we go. It's Cloud. And he's pretending to be Zack. What a stupid idiot. He did the jump! That's just like Zack! Benora White. Oi, Jack Lazarus. Oh! Oi, Jack Lazarus. <laughs> oh no! Oh no, it already- it begins. It begins already. When it's done, we're done. When it's done, we're done. You got that, chump? Motherfucker. Hey, look, it's the shot! How are they gonna- I don't understand how you can possibly meld all of these things into one when they all contradict each other. Like, the- like, you know. Crisis Core already you contradicts Seven, that. and you said they also well, do the Nibelheim incident in Before Crisis Two, and it's different again. But also, they will not like they won't. The thing is, they won't change Crisis Core's inclusion to fit the OG. They'll change OGs to fit Crisis Core because Square Enix are stupid. I feel like it would have made way more sense if you set the timer before fighting the Scorpion, right? Otherwise, what's the point? Like, you can definitely get out safely in 20 minutes. So, like. I see. I've never. I don't really mind the inclusion of Sephiroth more, mainly because I also am not even like mad at like the like the direction they want to go in, because that's not like the thing that bothers me the most. My issues with this game, or not with this game, because this game I don't think has these issues necessarily. But I, I guess like any references to the compilation will worry me mainly because it's it's written like shit. So for me, like my biggest issue is just like a I have an intense fear of bad writing. <laughs> And I, I also think that, like, the whole idea behind, like, oh, Sephiroth is not, like, it's not, it's not him, really. Like, I don't think that's good. I don't care how well written it is, I think it's bad. And as well, like, if you're changing a lot of stuff in the game, it doesn't matter how well written it is, you're gonna, you're gonna warp the themes of the game. Like, Final Fantasy VII has some very core themes that are, like, prevalent throughout the entire journey. And if you start to change things, you're going to lose those, and it's going to become... The meaning of the game will become something different. And yeah, it can be written well, and it can convey those new themes well, and it could be something different. But then I feel like, what's the point if you're losing the heart and soul of Final Fantasy VII in the process? This game doesn't. I don't think this game does lose that. But I think you can if you begin to change more. Rufus survived because his father called him a loser once. <laughs> yeah, because he was... <laughs> That was like one of the dumbest things in that book. It's so dumb. It's like, oh, my dad called me a loser. I'll look for the- like, he takes the L. He literally takes the L. That's how he survives. So yeah, that was- in that scene, it's- it's- It's pretty clear that Cloud, yeah, is talking about Nibelheim. Whereas Sephiroth is very much talking about the end of Final Fantasy VII. Because why would you say that was the- the crowning moment of our time together. Like, they didn't know each other <laughs> prior to the Nibelheim incident. So, he's gotta be, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah! Oh my god! Wait, it's called Loveless Street in this game. Why'd they, why'd they change the name to Loveless Street? Loveless Grand Hotel. Oh my god. Why is it called Loveless Street? Is it literally because that, like, that play is always on and never is not on? Well, it must be, because... It was five years ago that Zack would have been here. So they're still playing they're still playing Loveless. It's the only play that they have on at this theatre. Loveless Avenue, yeah. It's so weird, yeah. Why do the whispers attack her here? Like what's what Because the whispers are just trying to keep things on the right track, right? So what are the what's the point of them right now? Is it because Aerith is like talking to Cloud too much and they're like, that didn't happen. Let's fix that. It's because she knows him, and she remembers, and the whispers are like, Don't fucking think so, bitch. Costa del Sol Cafe and Bar. They really did change it. Yeah, because the bar is still here. It's just called Costa del Sol and not 
Bloody hell, Cloud's strong. I'm kicking this bike around. Yeah, but it's not Goblin's Bar. So odd. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a double meaning to the flower thing, because she's like, this is when lovers are reunited, and like, so she's kind of being reunited with Zack in a way, but also it's like, you know, being reunited with Cloud too. Hamburger, hash browns, roasted chicken, fresh juice, coffee, espresso. That's my favorite foods. I don't know how you write Kate Sith into Final Fantasy VII. Kyrie! I'm, 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 I'm pogging so hard right now. I know you because you're in the book. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Seeing them, seeing them meet Tifa, seeing them meet Tifa again. Just seeing if there's any little subtleties there between them eating. Like, Loveless! Oh my god, I did, how did I not realize it was everywhere? What is, why does that happen? Is that him seeing, is that, does that him, wait. What is that? Is that him seeing the future? Is that what that was? And then the, the whispers show up because he, like, to, like, because it's, like, a moment where, like, I don't know. Because that, that was obviously, like, a vision of the plate falling. So, like, it's him remembering. What? Let's see what happens here. I love Tifa. Can't choose to give it to Marlene in this one. How sweet. When did you get so thoughtful? Guy can change. It has been five years. Huh? Ah, see, see. Right. Come on in. That's so weird that I didn't pick up on that the first time I played. Why is her response? Huh? Like, why is that her response? Well, I know why, but like, it's so odd that when you play without knowledge of the original, like, you don't pick up on that. Oh, that's cool. It's the OG! I'm surprised there's not like a little interaction you can do where like you click it and Cloud's like, huh, can't go down there. Uh. Tifa is probably the best of the new voices. Like the biggest improvement. Tifa in Advent Children is absolutely fucking atrocious and that actress needs to be shot on sight. Like okay, I'm joking. But like, she didn't do a very good job. <laughs> True. No, 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 no way they, no, no, no way they, you, no, no, <laughs> they're using the play as a fucking metaphor again, they're doing it again, I can't, I can't, oh god, I think what I really, 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 really want to know is what the developers think of Genesis. Like, do they genuinely think he's well written? How can you write a game that's this well written and then look back at your work with Genesis and be like, this is the same, you know? Like, how can they, like, I don't know how they can think that they're on the same level. When you're when you're capable of writing a game this good and this tight, and then you're also capable of writing Genesis, like, what happened on that day? Did you, like, did you have a lot to drink? I, like, what happened there? Seems like the perfect fit for you. Oh, let's watch this. See what this is all about. She getting awfully so, close. After you left the village, mm -hmm. I let you off the hook before, back at the hall, but not this time. She's trying to see if he remembers, trying to get the mm -hmm. truth out of him. It's kind of funny, us going our separate ways, thinking that must be it, that we'd never meet again. And then here of all places we do. You know what? We should totally celebrate. But Let's Cloud thinks they out. met again in Nibelheim. Really? And then Tifa changes the subject. By the time I finally made it in, I didn't need heroes anymore. Cloud didn't have enough dreams and honor. No, Cloud, you didn't understand. You need two things to become a hero, okay? Dreams and honor, okay? You need those two things, those two abstract things that you need. God damn it, Cloud. The hero's journey is actually all about having dreams and honor. That's what that is, is actually all about. It is odd, though, that they spend so much time in Remake building up this mystery around Cloud. And, like, that mystery is still intact. But then they're going to spoil it by releasing Crisis Core Reunion before Rebirth. 
Just what was the point in writing this game in that way if you were just going to release Reunion and spoil it? I'd love to live in Midgar. It'd be so cool. Shimra are great, actually. What the fuck? She's bleeding the planet dry! What if Jessie shows up and she's the princess when you go to the gold saucer? That would be so dumb. That, like, she survived and she just decided to go on being an actress at the gold saucer. What if she has... What if she, um... Has amnesia? We came all this way just to eat pizza? Fuck. I want a giant slice of fucking pizza. Huh. 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 Imagine if Kate Sith basically mimics Reeve's actions and Reeve is just in the building smashing shit up and shouting through a pretend megaphone in a Scottish accent. Yeah, like, where does the voice... Because you see, like, he talks into a thing. So he's talking through Kate Sith. But, like, it just comes out of Kate Sith in a Scottish accent. That'll definitely happen. Cloud will, yeah, read the... Like, he'll read that his name's Kate Sith or whatever and he'll say Kate Sith. And then Kate Sith will be like, Well, actually, laddie, that's not how you say my name. <laughs> or whatever. Oh, it's the scene! This is the scene. So, what did you want to talk about? All the guys are leaving. But, but I'm not like them. I'm not going just to look for work. This is really good performance work, actually. Like, conveying the character really well. The best of the best. Like Sephiroth. If I'm ever trapped or in trouble... You'll come and see. This is a great scene. That's what heroes do. They save people. Get you a girl like Jessie. Uh, making your whole pizza. Psych. What does that mean? She was joking about making a pizza, or she was joking about him coming over, or she was joking about going to bed. Like What are you saying, Jessie? <laughs> I'm really glad to have you back, Cloud. Really glad. Did she say that because he's like, yeah. because like he started acting like himself and also remembered the promise? So it's almost like the first time she's like, oh, that's real cloud. He also, yeah, was communicating through the whispers. Yeah, true. So do you think, why are they here though? Why are they here? What are they trying to do? Oh, they're trying to make it so that Tifa has to go, wait, I don't know. But... So if if, 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 if if Sephiroth has control of the Whispers, right, does that mean the Does that mean that he is trying to trick them into changing fate? Like, he's trying to make it as if, like, they need to destroy the Whispers so that they can change fate, but really they shouldn't be changing fate. They should actually be following the fate that they're supposed to follow. Because that's how they beat Sephiroth the first time. So what, why, so, yeah, I get it, so they're trying to make Cloud go, but why did Cloud go in the original? They paid him to? So what what reason is there that this is different? Like why why is why is Cloud not on the mission in remake? But yeah, but what why did it change? Like why is this different? And why are the whispers trying to make it like the original? So so is it that? Let's see. Is it that this universe that we're playing in right now, right, is an actually an alternate universe where things happened or were going to happen differently, but Sephiroth I don't know. But Sephiroth is using the Whispers to put them on the path that led them to the original Final Fantasy VII. But in doing so, he's tricking them into thinking that that timeline's wrong. So they're going to break free of his confines and go in a different direction, which will actually lead to him winning, is what the plan is, right? Because if this was just the OG and the changes were going to... It was like the OG is changing. Then Cloud would be on the mission because he was on the mission in the OG, like he was. So... Basically, the Whispers are there to preserve the timeline the way it should be, but because things have changed earlier in Chapter 2, it caused a domino effect, leading Barrett to leave Cloud out of the mission. The Whispers are here to try to put it back on track. What What was the domino effect? So, Sephiroth showing up when he shouldn't have shown up, like, which is, so that's Advent Children Sephiroth showing up to Cloud, which delayed him meeting Aerith, which delayed him coming back to meet Avalanche, but, like, what was the domino effect? Like, what changed what to lead lead Barrett to exclude him from the mission? What was it that led to that point? I can't really figure out, like, the chain of events. I think it makes more sense if this is just a different timeline where things just happen differently, but the Whispers are trying to m make it follow the events of the original timeline. But, but, but I also think, but I think the game, the game establishes alternate universes just exist 
because the end of this game has that different stamp logo during Zack's victory. So that is a different universe to even this one, and this is a different universe to original Final Fantasy VII, which means they must coexist alongside each other somehow. So there must be alternate realities in this universe. So Sephiroth crossed over somehow. Maybe the live stream spans all of them, and by becoming part of the live stream, he is able to. Still like this game? So far, yeah. I think I'm just, based on just, the only thing that's like changed for me is based on references to the compilation. I'm starting to see like, see through it a bit and be like, oh, this could go in a bad direction. Like it could, it very easily could become bad. And I think I have such like a disliking for the compilation that it worries me that like, no matter how badly written, I'm just like worried for them like going down the route because I just hate the ideas. It's one of those things where you got to wait and see, and I'll keep an open mind. Like, I'm not going to immediately, like, you know, see Genesis and be like, oh, this is bad. But uh, it's going to be difficult not to feel like that, you know? <laughs> oh. Nibelheim! They changed the line again. I'm sick of all of this. Does that actually make sense now? I'm sick of all of this. She's saying the thing that she said. She said the thing before and then she said it again now. Here we go, here's the thing. The ghosts take him to the church because it would be dumb for him to just land there. <laughs> Which, yeah, I agree, it would be dumb. It's the, it's the best girl. Let's go! Maybe you're not okay. I love her. Finally awake, are we? Third time. Third time someone falls into the church. You're Aerith. It's Aerith. And you are? Cloud. I've got one too. You and everybody. White material. Not like mine, no. It's special. Mine's not good for anything at all. True, based. Oh! Oh! There it is. Fly me. Bet you just don't know how to use it. <clears throat> Could be. Though Look at her, smug really motherfucker. She fucking knows. On your first playthrough, you know she's talking about her bow? I had no clue what she was talking about. I had no fucking idea what she was talking about. It was a gift from her mother, and the bow was a gift from a guy I knew for five seconds. <laughs> Imagine if that was the line. Oh, God. Bow, now, now, now. This music myself. played in my head Thanks. while I was reading The Kids Are Alright. Constantly, the song played in my head. One date ought to do it. Huh? Huh. Well, you're Crisis call reference. <laughs> but it's not. But it also is. <laughs> Isn't it weird? <laughs> Reno secretly knows. <laughs> Reno secretly knows like mine if it's to be a hunt. <laughs> the whispers! Quick, let's push barrels from the rafters. <clears throat> okay, so, we okay, 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 okay. So we established yesterday we had a big long conversation about what changes to not get Cloud on the mission. What changed to make Aerith nearly trip off a balcony? Because I don't think that's the case. That's That can't be a domino effect. There's no way there's a domino effect that makes Aerith nearly fall off the balcony. I don't think it's the same timeline with the domino effect. I think it's just a totally different universe where different things happen. And the whispers, are I think, I think, I don't think the whispers are natural. I think the whispers are created by Sephiroth to try and push an alternate timeline onto the original timeline's course for his own benefit to trick the main characters into changing it so that he can win. He's like gaslighting them. According to them, the whispers are part of the planet. Do its bidding. <clears throat> hmm. Then why must they destroy them? And why are they like seemingly controlled by Sephiroth at the end of the game? Shall we mosey on over? Let's mosey. Let's mosey. They love the Turks and they love Zack. And they love Rufus Shinra for some reason. Like, who the fuck cares about Rufus Shinra? They're like, we need to bring Rufus Shinra back, the beloved Final Fantasy VII character. <laughs> for no reason, either. He doesn't do anything important. He just exists and is back. 
I think seeing the remnants of Shinra would have been more interesting if Rufus Shinra stayed dead. This is the worst. This is a rusty pipe. I say this every time, but why are they sliding down a rusty pipe? This is... It's awful. It makes me cringe. I hate that. Come on. Zoe Elmira! And she goes, get the fuck out! Get out now! I wonder... Or was my job. When did Aerith yep. gain Thanks. the knowledge of previous so events you gonna head back to was it seven? was it was it yeah. like recently or was she born with it in this universe she's also yeah i know she's po yeah that's what i'm saying she's post advent children Aerith. so where did she, where did that consciousness come from because she was still born in this universe and like grew up she sucks the memories out of the pipe what the fuck i've never been in here or maybe i have and i've just forgotten um <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Tifa, wait! Tifa! Tifa! All the boys, they like Tifa. Tifa? Your girlfriend? No. Yes. Uh, oh, we have this bit. Because uh, 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 they're clone. But why two? The reunion. Oh. <laughs> you don't know who Sephiroth is, do you? But I've got a feeling he's still alive. Oh, right. Come on, let's go. Then you must be from the legendary. Mm. She knows. I think the O. Right? I don't actually know what I think of that, the way she way she delivered that, actually. I'm thinking about it, and I'm really not sure what I think they were doing there with that. Whether it's like a... She knows and try, is trying not to give it away, or whether it's like her... I don't know. To me, the original game still exists, so it's not as if they've hurt... I don't know. Like, I, I just don't feel that this is inherently bad, just by existing. I feel like Aerith, though... I don't know. I think this is hard to explain. I think for me, Aerith in the original game, although being important to the plot, is not. I don't want to upset anyone, but is not that deep of a character. Like I, I find Tifa and Cloud infinitely more complex than Aerith is. I think she's more interesting in this. I think she becomes a character because she uses the the little growth she had in the original, and she's allowed to play a larger role in character building. I feel like all of the growth that Aerith has is post the big moment in at the end of Disc One. Like I feel like all of that comes from how the characters, you know, what she tried to do. And how the characters remember that act and sort of, you know. So she's important, don't get me wrong, like she's an important character in the OG. Especially for all of the characters and their own growth. But it's almost like she facilitates that more than she has her own, like, interesting arc. Well, today's special. That's why I've been working my butt off. Uh, what's so special about it? <laughs> it's the day they meet. Is that okay, what that is? Time to go. I always was like that line so mysterious before. But that's what she means, right? Learn to talk to her. I love that scene though. Did that's so good. Say anything? Uh good work today, guys. I love it. <laughs> that's the spirit. I've been worried sick. Sorry. We Cloud, get out! Time. Get out of my house now! Take a load off, okay? Take a load off. Sounds weird. Take a load off with Elmira. I want you to take a load off. <laughs> Get out of my house! Oh, let's replace the music too. Fuck. Ooh. It's like he's starting to remember. Like, not starting to remember, but like, there's something that he can't remember almost. Which is interesting. Does that mean that Aerith is like trying to make him remember? To Aerith or Sephiroth? I think it's Sephiroth. Yeah, that makes sense. Because every time it goes like a, that's like the the Genova cells, right? Oh my God! Why? You know, a long time ago, 
I used to sell flowers here. Crisis call reference. Oh, yeah? Just that you were the same rank. Huh? As who? The first guy I ever loved. You knew him for like five and a half minutes, but I, I do just think that she do, like doesn't know fully. I genuinely just think that like she's not 100% completely conscious of it. I just Here. because I think it's like it's almost like as she's doing things, it becomes familiar to her. I feel like it's like as she, as she does something, she it's like a deja vu for her. She's like, I, I've done this before. And like, it's almost like instinctive. And it's like, I think there's at points her like the consciousness that like unknows what's going on comes through stronger. But it's not present 100% of the time. Leslie! I like not Leslie so fast, a lot. Buddy. Back it up. See, I don't really like necessarily what they did here with Leslie because the book implies that Leslie found it really hard to get out of this life of like that he was in and he decided to become a better person for his wife, right? But this game just implies he was actually always a good guy. He was just like secretly a good guy while working for Corneo. I like the idea that he was he was he was a bad guy that became good. I wonder if um what what would Aerith's advent children outfit look like? Oh. It'd be the same outfit, just all black. It was interesting. I'm picking up Tief uh Aerith. Or Tief Oh oh no wait hang on. No I gotta pick up Aerith because I think at this point in Cloud's like Aerith is the one that we gravitate towards. Then, after disc one, we start to gravitate towards Tifa. And so, if I'm in that mindset, that role-playing mindset, we got to gravitate towards Aerith. Because that connection with Aerith is what allows the connection with Tifa by the end. Is what I would say. That's my... That's what I would... That's what I would say. Cloud. The future is in... Set in stone. That's... What I always tell myself. Yeah. <laughs> that means two things, doesn't it? Because she does tell herself that, but not in the way that you tell yourself something, in the way that herself from the future tells herself that. You know? You get it? Yeah? I'm sorry, but I can't feel sorry for the people that dropped the plate. Like, I just can't. I, we had this conversation when I first played this. And everyone was telling me, no, 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 they get redeemed. They don't. They Square Enix just, like, tries to make you forget that they did this. Like, there's some things you can't really be redeemed from. Especially when the game doesn't even, like, confront that they did it. They just, like, try to make you go, ah. Forget about it. Don't matter. I guess it's too late to grow a conscience. Yeah, I mean, I would say, I would say the opposite, actually. I'd say this is the perfect time to actually grow a conscience. Before you've done the thing, just don't, just don't do it. This is actually the perfect time for you to grow a conscience, Reno. That's a dumb thing that you've said. Realistically speaking, will you finish the Final Fantasy franchise before 16? Oh, definitely. I definitely will. 100%. Easy. How many games do I have? 8, 9, 10... 12, 13, 15. I have six games to play. The only reason I've been, I've, I've, this is taking so long is because I've taken so long on seven. But once I'm done with seven, I'll be back into the swing of things and we'll just do Final Fantasy after Final Fantasy. I'll be able to do it before 16. Yeah, I don't think the Whispers rules are consistent. Because early, like, other stream, we were having that conversation about, like, what causes the domino effect to divert the timeline that the Whispers have to try to revert it. But why are the Whispers here? If the whispers are here to correct time, it means that time was going to divert. But why was it? Why? What caused it to need to divert that the whispers had to re-correct it? Because if, like, nothing changed, so, like, why would they not die? Unless we're saying that things only happened in Final Fantasy VII because the whispers made it that way, not because it was ever... Because that, imp that, that implies that the way it's supposed to go is not the way that it went in Final Fantasy VII. Like, the way it was meant to go was actually different. The Whispers are making it happen that way. Otherwise, it would just happen that way anyway. What reason is there for it to change? There's no, like, there's no instigating factor. Why would it change? Like, I get things have changed. Like, I get Sephiroth is here from Advent Children. I get Aerith is. But why does that make it so that Biggs wasn't gonna die and the... The whispers had to make it so he does. But then he doesn't anyway. 
How does he survive? Okay, uh, editing James here. I probably, I know I sound like fucking shit. I, I've come down with something, um, but I'm, I'm, just, I'm editing this anyway. I can't include all of this. It's just too much. It's too much stuff on the timeline here. I just, we gotta, we get, we need to get rid of all of this, everything here. I, we talked for too long. However, the VOD is in the description if you if you want to listen to the whole conversation. However, there was one little piece I wanted you to listen to, so I'm going to leave that bit in because it's important. Oh, also an interesting point to make. Aerith gave Red some of her memories and knowledge, so does that mean Red has lost these memories now that she has? And if he hasn't, does he know what to do with them? Will he tell the party? True. I mean, he says, if it's to be a hunt, you could use a nose like mine, and I think that's some pretty profound knowledge. I love this scene a lot. That it's the big and destroyer house. <laughs> yeah, I do like her knowing Barrett's name. That's another little, another little thing there. I love Shall the idea of Barrett and Marlene building a house. Oh, I love Marlene. <laughs> what is that though? It's the same thing she just read. It's like giving... Is she giving her the memories? And that calms her down? Because now Marlene knows everything will be okay? The Whispers should have made sure Song still bitch slaps Aerith. True. That's an important point of the game, I feel. No time to dick around. He's quipping. He's about to drop the plate on lots of people and he's quipping. And we're supposed to feel sorry for him later. Authorized. Fuck off. The Turks are dumb and they're used dumb in the compilation and they're dumb. <laughs> Even in the good books, they're dumb. I don't understand the purpose of them. They're not, like, they're just inconsistent. I don't understand the point of them. Well, like, I do, but I also just think they're dumb. <gasps> it's the boy! <laughs> Fucking Kate Sith. Memories. Those are memories, right? I like his belt. I really like his belt. You have failed again. Oh, that line hits different. That line really hits different. But through suffering, you will grow strong. Isn't that what you want? <laughs> That's good. That's a good one. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, so those lines are from Nibelheim, when it's, when it's everything's all white. And, like, I quite like the way it's, like, you failed again, but I like that they establish earlier, like, kind of, like, what happened with Sephiroth and, like, his hometown, because if you've not played the OG, it almost sounds like Sephiroth saying, like, you failed again and, like, you let your hometown burn and now you've let Sector 7 burn. But when you have played the OG, you're like, oh, he's saying, he's saying, like, you failed to stop the plate falling again. I think that's good. When Elmira mentions that Aerith is in her daughter by blood, the camera focuses on the Barrett and he grunts to himself. Oh, why did I notice that? I want to go back. Wait. Is it supposed to be like a wing? Is that what that is? They have wing because they're monster. People think they're specifically molded after Genesis because they're all red and have tendril like his wings. And they're all deep ground experiments. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Like, that does make sense. Not in a way where, like, it, you know, is good, but, like, I, yeah, I can see that line of thought. Oh, I get what this means now, right? He said that as if, like, they'd just been through a really nice Shimra experience. And he's like, oh, that's the Shimra I know. I knew everything we saw before was just a front. Like, <laughs> what does that mean, dude? <laughs> oh, that's clouding the thing. Whoa, whoa, that was a lot. Wait, what was all that? Here come the whispers. They don't want Cloud to remember just yet. This is that moment, isn't it? I remember watching this resolution during... Something that Bugenhagen says in everyone Cosmic Canyon. Yeah, that. Everyone dies eventually. It's like what she's saying is, like, against the will of the planet, though. Like, she wants to break free of fate. Is this just livestream Aerith? Is that just... Is that just livestream Aerith? 
not actual like Aerith. And like she says, she says like you can't fall in love with me, even if you think you, you have. It's not real. We deserve. Because she this. knows he's meant to end up with Tifa. But then she also wants to defy fate Hello. too. Can't sleep. No. You too. I heard footsteps. I knew there was something weird going on. You buying flowers. The music is really good. They symbolize reunion, believe it or not. Reunion. I was curious, so I looked it up. Crisis call reunion. I tried to keep it alive as long as I could. But now, it's dead and buried. What's the symbolism of that? Like the bar. Our home. And everything else. Oh, I think I have seen this one. Tifa. <laughs> they took everything from us. Again. This is a great track. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Oh, and he hugs a bag. That's a great scene, man. That's so good. I'm actually gonna cry. Fuck, that's really good. I feel like I've seen it before, but that feels like it hit different. I guess after knowing, like, where they end up. Ah, oh, that's good. That's really good. Cloud. Cloud, you're hurting me. Aww. <laughs> He was just hugging her too it's tight. That's a good. That's a really good one. Fuck, I like that a lot. The one with Barrett. I don't think I've ever seen this one. Do they embrace Likewise. too? No, I'm good. Real good. <laughs> Besides, when I close my eyes, I start thinking about things. About people, like Finn, lazy little punk. Finn. Kid would do damn near anything except what you told him. But ask him to paint you a picture, and boy, howdy. Those stamps in the tunnels. Finn's work, every one. Then there's Al. Oh, Intel guy. That music's good. He had these tricks for steel and codes I still don't understand. Stole his share of hearts, too. But when it came to the ladies, he just had the one trick. Bouquet of flowers hidden behind his back. Funny to think. Some of them might have even come from here. He pulled a flower trick on Tifa once, believe it or not. <laughs> she told him where to stick them. Of course she did. Our quartermaster Nelly had a good laugh at that. She was tight with Jesse. People sometimes took him for sisters, even. This is nice. They'd say no way and get upset, but then they'd start giggling and, you know, yeah, they'll all be fine. They're strong. They're tough. Like me. <laughs> After we save Aerith, I'll introduce you to them. Sounds good. <laughs> Never thought I'd feel better after talking with your hard-boiled ass. Think you can sleep now? Oh yeah, like a baby. That's a nice scene. They're all nice. Although I think that Tifa one might be the best. I think that one was the best one. <gasps> Kyrie! The voice of Anne from Persona 5. I like seeing her after reading The Kids Are Alright. Because I liked her a lot in that book. She was really good. Although, she is talking a lot of shit. This is fake news, I will say. Imagine if Leslie betrayed us and he died. Then the kid wouldn't be alright. The kids are alright reference. Oh my god. It's Merle. But this plot point's now ruined because I've read the book, so I know she actually ends up alright. The kids are alright! Next time I see a bench, look at the design of it. Okay. Alright, let's look at the thing. I don't know what that is. Oh, it's the save points from the original. Wait, wait, no, wait, hang on. We're gonna... <clears throat> we're gonna... <clears throat> we're 
Whoa! Is that the save point from the original game? That's so cool! Because this is the save point. Whoa! That's so cool! I guess we'll build another bar. Oh. Yeah. We will. They do build another bar too. Wait, does that mean that line is not a cool piece of character work? It's just a reference to their fucking bar and edge. Uh, see, this is what I mean. And it's also it also does work as a piece of character, but also it is like a little a little nudge, like eh, eh. <laughs> you know they but you know they build another bar, don't you? You know it. You've seen you've seen that vent, children. <laughs> I want you to continue to edge. Replaying it, I've noticed that a lot of things that I thought were just like little character moments, they're just like really nice, actually are little like hints to stuff that are in the OG or were in the, mainly that were in the compilation. And it's like, ah, oh, I thought that was just something that was in this because it was nice. And it is still nice. Like, don't get me wrong, that line from Barrett, guess we'll build another bar, is still really good. But with the foreknowledge of what happens, it also is very clearly also a reference, isn't it? Yeah, like there are, maybe there is a bit too much of Cloud's backstory foreshadowed, but I, I will say like, as someone that didn't know, I don't think it's foreshadowed to the point where like it points it out because I still didn't know any of it. Like it, it didn't mean anything to me out of context. It was just, it was just intriguing more than anything. It's fine. <gasps> it's Reeve, it's Reeve, it's Reeve! He's there, he's controlling his little robot cat from here. It's like, oh, we're in a gas mask. I think I just threw up a little. Man. Take a mental mo note of that gas mask for later. Oh, really? Why? The person wearing the gas mask? Is that re was that important? It's an easter egg for something? Wait, but I don't understand. I've seen every Final Fantasy thing. I don't... Every Final Fantasy thing. I've seen every Final Fantasy VII thing. How can there be something I'm yet to see? Except that Mako has made people's lives better. It's made people blind. Blind to the cold hard truth. Even I used to buy into their bullshit. Oh. That makes me even madder. That's fun. That's that's a not that's quite oh, that's good. I like that actually. That was good. That was a good little foreshadowing reference thing. I liked that. I liked that. I get it now. I get it now. Pioneering its use. This is so cool. We need a really below average compilation game set in this period of Final Fantasy VII history. Oh, that's then that's Meteor, yeah, of course. Ooh, it's actually pretty cool seeing this now because we actually get to see Meteor crashing down and then. Ooh, ooh. He kills Tifa, and he kills Barrett in this vision, which is odd because he doesn't do that. That's not a thing that happens. Ooh, fuck, that's so good. Sephiroth. Ooh, that's still so good. Interesting that they would find out about Meteor at this point before they ever were supposed to find out about it, right? Like... You don't find out about Meteor in Final Fantasy VII until a while later, till you're in the the temple. Cloud? Oh yeah, this makes sense now. Holy shit! It's cool, bro. We went through training together. Damn. So you're still alive and kicking, huh? Some of the guys heard you got smoked, but I told them it was all bullshit. Hey, sit tight, man. I'm gonna go get Kunso. I'll be right back. <laughs> Fuck me, man. Classic Gunsel. I would start with candidates from Soldier. These would, of course, include S and G types. Quite frankly, oh no. So. Oh no. Oh no 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 <laughs> Oh boy Why are you a soldier? Yeah. No, not quite. Oh now I recall. My memory was mistaken. My boy, you weren't a soldier. 
How have I never noticed that piece of dialogue before? What? Oh, and the whispers are like, no, Hojo, you won't fucking tell him now. Wait, how did I never notice that before? He outright just says it. I feel like people are going to be annoyed when they when they watch this reaction, well, when they watch this as a condensed video, because all my reactions are negative. Like, I think when people want to watch a reaction video, they just want to watch me pog at the thing I recognize. But, like, I, my, you know, I'm just, my brain works, so I don't do that. I... Red! She gives him the memoirs. The, the memoirs. Yes. Hmm. Oh, the music! Oh shit, I just pogged at the thing I recognize. <laughs> I forget what this bit is. It's the first time we see Genova, right? We get a little flash and some visions of Genova. Again! 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 I'm the one who carried you here. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. He knows. Now. Red is way too wise. He comes across as like really old and wise and mystical. So Aerith does say that she's losing- every time they touch she loses a part of herself, which does sound like it's suggesting that every time the Whispers touch her she's forgetting a part of herself that was given to her by Advent Children Aerith. To be less and less certain of what she's supposed to do. This is a big gaming moment here. Genova. Ooh. Is it me or is the colour of the screen different for this one moment? Like, normally it goes green. I feel like it's going purple here. Cloud is struggling. Oh, yeah, see that? Now it's green again. Why is it focusing on him grabbing his arm? What's that about? Oh, It's still really cool, even if it is a big reference to Crisis Core. It's just a shot for shot. Oh. Oh, the oh, it's Geo Stigma. It's like remembering Advent Children when he does when that happens. It's like uh, 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 <laughs> I see, I see. It's the guy. It's the boy. This bit on the first playthrough is whoa, mental. Yeah, he must be trying to make Cloud remember. I, I think even if like I don't end up loving. Uh, rebirth. I'm really excited for it just for the presentation of things. Like, I'm just excited to see, like, how they design bosses and, like, you know, how they make the environments, like, and what they do with the, like, the whole visual aspect of the game and stuff. And gameplay-wise, like, you know, how they how they evolve the combat. Like, will it play exactly the same or will they adjust things? I, I honestly hope it plays exactly the same and they just add little things or make it a bit more snappy or... Stuff like that. I don't want them to do like a God of War Ragnarok where they just change how the game plays for like no conceivable reason. Rufus Shimmer is called a loser once by his father, which is why he can't die. He literally survives by taking the L. It's it's incredible. <laughs> the way it cuts to the cutscene is great. In comes the boy. Hell yeah. This is still sick. All the whispers just like flock to the tower for some reason. Is it to prevent Shim from catching up with the main guys so they can definitely escape Midgar? Oh yeah, Rufus can see them. See, they love Rufus Shimra. He has to be important. Why can he see them? But I thought people could only see them. Wait, yeah, I don't know. Because Cloud can only see them after Aerith grabs him. What about like Barrett and Tifa and Jesse and Wedge? Bigs though. First they say Aerith has to touch you, but then it becomes anyone's involved, so the timeline can see them. I don't know if that's true. I think that's too big of an oversight. I, I think there's a deeper reason. Because they don't ever say that's why. And I don't think Wedge can see them at the end either. He's just getting pushed back. I don't think he knows why though. But then we've we've but then they have to explain it in this game, because they can't explain it in another one, because the whispers are all dead now. We killed them. And you you're wrong. 
I love this. Ugh, this is confusing me. Still. Zack is looking at... Can he see the whispers? We drag our asses all this way. I do like this, actually, still, to be fair. As someone that, like, hates Crisis Core and hates people that love Zack, it's still kind of cool. So I think he can see the whispers, boy, oh right? Boy. The price of freedom is steep. Oh, boy. Crisis Core. Embrace your dreams. Dreams and honor. Whatever happens. Protect your honor. Oh, dreams and honor, dreams and honor. <laughs> Come and get it! He did the thing. It's the thing, guys. So did they did they see that or not? Was that just us seeing that? Is Sephiroth breaking the fourth wall and giving us Genova visions now? He slices through the whispers and creates a like a tear in the fabric of time. Or something. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. When the flashback starts, it zooms in on Cloud. When it ends, it zooms out of Aerith. I think that means it's being shown to both of them, right? Oh, I love it. I love it. Destiny's crossroads. I do Boundless, like this line. Terrifying freedom. I really like that line. Like I like that a lot. Never ending sky. Only Cloud and Aerith connect to that memory. Yeah, that, I mean, it seems that way, doesn't it? I find it really funny that Barrett thanks the Whispers for saving his life, and 30 minutes later, he's all in on killing them because Aerith says so. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. I wish they'd elaborate on the Whispers more. They're so vague on what they mean by Destiny. Yeah, and I think, honestly, I think I've playing Ragnarok too. Destiny and Fate is just such a vague concept that should not be used, because it... Like, fate and destiny is so confusing to, like, wrap your head around. Yeah, so Aerith is saying, in order to beat Sephiroth, who has... Who's clearly from post-Advent Children, in order to beat him, we have to do things differently. We can't do things the same way we did in Final Fantasy VII. And in doing so, we'll be changing ourselves, meaning the outcome will be different, and we'll end up as different people by the end of the events of remake so she is implying that things have to be different they have to play out differently yeah i just think i just think fate and destiny is very difficult to wrap your head around because it's like well who who ordains fate who like there's like it's difficult to wrap your head around because like there's almost no purpose to it there's no like origin point because fate almost works like a time loop and it just confuses you to try and think about and only like really well done stories like that can like like work it's very difficult i think the one thing that keeps me on board with this is just that it's written well for the most part there's some hiccups don't get me wrong it's not perfect it's not perfect especially after playing the og and stuff and really understanding the don't know like about you, but looks normal to me. like the meta textual stuff but i think overall it's written in a way where it's compelling and i like want to know what happens next oh yeah hey look it's the end it's the post credit scene what the <clears> hell did i just see Oh, they both know. That's such a weird way to word that. I think. That's such a weird way of wording that. Because that's not what it means at all. But they're saying that version of reality, that outcome, is the one that allows Sephiroth to actually ultimately go back. And so we don't want that event to happen again. So we've got to change the events that lead to the post credit scene of Final Fantasy VII. Meteor. This can't be our future. <gasps> well, so they want to stop Meteor from even coming down in the first place. Gotcha. Whoa. Wait, what was that? It was from the beginning of Advent Children? I don't remember. <gasps> Oh, Aerith. Whoa. That, that was... Okay. This is really like the final world in Kingdom Hearts, isn't it? Where the water we? on the ground and shit.
What was that supposed to represent? This is very Advent Children though, isn't it? It's, it's weird seeing this again after Advent Children. Like, this is literally Advent Children. But that was like, Meteor is like coming down and you got all those tornadoes and shit and then he just like absorbs it almost. And like, by him, by him like coming, like fully forming himself and being here, it gets rid of Meteor. And then, what's that supposed to be? Is that supposed to represent something? No! <laughs> the wing means so, like, it It means so much to me now in that, like, it's bad and dumb. Because he doesn't even have a wing in OG. It's just when he's safe for Sephiroth. That's it. Like, that's it now. We've destroyed fate. And then that takes us to the edge of creation. And literally the end of Final Fantasy VII. That's so odd that it happens right here, like this scene that happens right at the end of OG. Because this is where Cloud does Omni Slash. The music. Careful now. That which lies ahead does not yet exist. That's the city of the ancients, isn't it? The edge of creation. Yeah, what does that mean? Is that just a new take on it, or is that just are they just deciding that's what it always was, or... Let us oh, and then it does- it's this shot! It's this fucking shot as well! This is cool! And then... See, this is where Cloud now does Omni Slash, but Sephiroth blocks it all. Which is- it, which is interesting in two ways. Because it's like Cloud clearly subconsciously remembers. But also, Sephiroth does too. And yeah, it might not be exactly Omni Slash, but it's very obviously supposed to represent Seven that. Seconds till the end. Time enough for you, perhaps. What does that mean? But what will you do with it? I still don't. I still don't know what that means. Seven seconds till the end. Nah, don't know. I don't know what that means. Fuck, though. It definitely is interesting. Like, it solidifies that I'm interested. Because I want to know what the fuck's going on. He's like, one day I will have to take the L to survive. My father thought I was a loser, you know. Oh, and it's the different stamp that I now notice. Which means this is a different universe. Wait. Because stamp is different. That is what that's trying to signify. I... It is kind of cool. I don't... It's weird because, like, I don't care about Crisis Core and the story or any of it. But there's something about this moment, I don't know, that I'm kind of like... I'm, I think I'm just a sucker for, like, what-if moments where I'm like, oh, what if it was different? And you get to see it play out? I don't know. I think I just enjoy that concept so much that it overrides my critical thought. <laughs> so, yeah, the whispers would... Were... Yeah. But I need to know, in this universe, what caused the stamp guy to be different. What was the cause of that, eh? Someone riddle me that. Because why weren't the whispers sorting that out? You know? I feel like they should have been. These guys are all happy in the wreckage of the slums. They might stumble across a dead body or two, you know? Hey, look, Biggs is alive. Why? I don't know. As long as he's still out there. Oh, the music swells too. Here it comes. I thought you beat him. Let's go. We can. We will. Count Here it comes. It. This is also a great moment too. If it's to be a hunt, you could use an like mine. Yes! Let's go! Let's go! Let's fucking go! The greatest line in all of fiction! True, Red. If it is to be a hunt, we could use a nose like yours. So true. So true. That's gonna be on every Twitter header I ever have from now on. <gasps> Almost there, Cloud. We're almost there. See, this though resembles the OG more than Crisis Core. Because in Crisis Core, Cloud is just like over by a rock somewhere and he has to crawl over. I miss it. The steel sky. Oh, that's a good final line, I think. But in the OG, 
it's they both um like they go over to the edge and it happens right at the edge of that cliff looking over at Midgar. They don't make this class close to Midgar. Yeah, they do. They're on the on the edge of that cliff looking over at Midgar. That's where it happens. Maybe it looks a bit further away, but like it's meant to be the same place. Does that also mean that in this alternate universe there is a, another cloud then? Does that mean there's two going to be two clouds? Maybe that's what maybe that's it. Maybe that's why it's different. Maybe cloud like died in Nibelheim or something. And that's why Zack's able to make it all the way, because he's not hauling Cloud with him. But he did also go off to go fight um, Genesis. Um, so... That's not the universe where he kills all the guys, is it? I thought that final shot was, th was this universe. That's just Cloud, like, subconsciously remembering. That's not the other universe, is it? That was the universe where he killed... Are you sure? How do you know that? Because Cloud Cloud isn't in the in that intermission post credit scene. Where did he leave him? Rebirth trailer. Oh yeah, the final shot of the rebirth trailer. They're right next to Midgar. So, so Cloud is in that alternate universe too. What the fuck? Which means there are two clouds though. So that means. So that means that what. <laughs> Oh no! Oh, she's doing the, she's doing the thing. It's the thing. Oh wow! I love you, This version of her theme is so good too. I love how she just loves Materia. It's great. Oh, this is so good. I love this. This DLC is kind of like a. Very similar to how Ghost of Tsushima handled their DLC. In that, like, although it's only bite size, it remedies a lot of problems that the main game has. Fort Condor! It's so weird playing Fort Condor after after knowing what the real Fort Condor is. I also forget how to play. <laughs> I love it. We gotta do at least one of these so we get the uh so we get so we get the jingle. <laughs> Oh, I love it so much. Anyway, it's Ooh. nice to meet you. I'm Sonan Kasakabe. I was lucky enough to learn how to fight from good Yeah. Oh, he's about to say it. And she's like, I don't want to wear that guy. He's a fucking dick. But she's right. He is a dick. <laughs> oh, it happened again. Wait, I forgot how many times that happened. <laughs> Here we go. Deep ground. I know all this now. Well, I mean, I say I know all of this. Does anyone really know what Dirge of Cerberus is about? This design is cool. They managed to translate it really nicely. Classic Vice. He's indulging them. Why? So that's the real Vice. Wait, Vi- I forget, is Vice the real Vice for the whole of Dirge up until the end when Hojo takes over? Or is he Hojo the whole time? Nero sounds like a catchy. Pretty good scene. He's told you the whole time. Right, so but this is the real vice. It's quite cool to see like the origin of the two. Well, not even the origin, because we don't know how they ended up in where they are now, but you know. Here is voiced by Mishima. Oh, that's even weirder. I think this is quite good as well to have Yuffie come into contact with Nero and Vice. Because it kind of adds this personal stake to their storyline. Because when they eventually tackle it. But yeah, eventually when you come around to see like having the dirge stuff happen, if they do, like depending on how they handle it. There'll be this personal, like, sort of aspect to it where, like, Nero killed Sonon. So, like, Yuffie will have her own little stake in it and stuff. Especially with her being quite a major character in Dirge as well. Deep Ground Soldier! This is so weird after playing Dirge and understanding, like, knowing who these people are and stuff. This is so weird. The, design, the Deep Ground designs are quite nice for the soldiers and stuff. They should have kept the design of the female soldiers where we know they're female because they don't wear pants. It was far more realistic. True. True. How am I going to know now? I'm not going to know now, am I? He is a creepy boy. I wonder if they'll have Scarlet slap Tifa. And Tifa slap back. I wonder whether they'll have that. Or whether it'll be like a boss fight. Do you reckon they'll have a boss fight with Scarlet on the on the that big 
cannon thing. <laughs> I wonder if they're gonna keep Cloud going through Tifa's underwear. Yeah, definitely not. They definitely will not keep that. That is definitely gone. Maybe, maybe what they'll do is in the flashback, like you can go over to the drawer and you can press triangle on it, and it'll do. It'll like start a cutscene of Cloud about to like reach for the thing, and then maybe it'll like. Do like a little glitchy like oh memory's wrong and then it'll like cancel out the animation or something it's time initiate the Zvia field test sir Zvia. he said the thing i recognize that it's just i look at this and i'm like the way they've changed vice and nero to like there's they're just better like the way they're integrated and the way deep ground's integrated it feels it just feels better so i'm like why would they leave crisis core exactly the same and like genesis will be exactly as bad like i don't know i just felt that's odd this was fuck the fuck this is so this is this this like it makes nero pretty damn formidable i will say i like this a lot I just, uh, to me in my mind, the, the, like, the reason that Reunion exists and the reason the Remake Trilogy exists are not the same thing, and they're trying to be like, they're trying to say that Reunion is like integral to Remake because they really want to sell it, and they're like, let's sell it to Re Crisis Core fans and Remake fans, and obviously that's like the higher-ups people saying that. I just, I just don't feel, I don't know. Until I play Rebirth and Part 3 and like, they clearly indicate that yes, Reunion is actually really important, it's integral, everything happened exactly the same, and you have to play Reunion to, you know, to be on board with the remake trilogy. I'm just not going to buy that. I just feel like it's corporate bullshit because they want to sell the game. It doesn't feel like it's an integral part of the remake stuff. It feels like just this tacked on, like, we could make some money. We could make some money off of Crisis Core. Let's just fucking, you know, remaster it, resell it, say it's part of the remake trilogy easy and like, that's not to say that i don't think it will follow a, a lot of crisis core closely i do think that it will i just don't think it'll be as bad at least that's what i'm expecting i'm expecting it i'm talking about this over the, this death scene but you know I've, I've seen already it's not you know it's not what we're here for i'm just expecting the remake trilogy i'm just in my head i'm just separating reunion from the remake trilogy i don't care what they say that's what i'm doing because i want to take the remake trilogy at face value for what it does and not some, like, tacked-on fucking cash grab remaster. And so I, when they present me with Genesis, I will take it at face value and be like, is this well-written? The answer will be no. But, like, I want to live in hope for, like, you know, another year. Like, I do think Zack will be integral. I do think Angeal will. I do think um, Genesis will, obviously. Like, the, like, they will take a lot from Crisis Core the same way they've taken a lot from Dirge here. I wonder if Sonon's going to, like, come back as, like, an evil, possessed, evil man or something. They're gonna make him a Sviet. And when they do the Dirge stuff, Yuffie will have to fight an evil Sonon or something. I don't know. This is a great shot. This is such a good shot here. I fucking love this. I mean, it's awful, obviously, but like, that is such a good shot to see. Wow. the music too like this is that moment for Yuffie where like you know I love it it's so good like she has a reason to want to fight it's so fucking good and I do wonder how much because in the OG it's very much oh she sort of learns her reason to fight as she tags along with the the main party after just trying to search for materia I do wonder how that, that's going to play in Rebirth now that she sort of already has this reason. Will it be more of a she wants to fight back on her own? She wants to take the materia from the main party so that she can fight back on her own. And it's more about her learning to... Oh, she said I don't think I can do this alone. I suppose thinking about it though, she did always want... She just doesn't openly say she wants friends. She does. And she does want to do it with someone, but she doesn't want to make that too obvious right like that's the that's a character thing all right let's skip this do we still get the post credits another full day give or take when my mom says a full day i love she means this from the time you get up in the morning it's weird that everything's all like barren because it's green in from the time you get up in the well morning, all the way through till the time you get up it's not when morning. you're like in game but on the overworld so it's which all green. is it for you man it was so weird when i first saw this i didn't know I didn't know what the game was going to be about. Like, I didn't even know, like, what the world was going to be like. It's so weird watching it now, like, knowing. 
Like, this is them heading to Calm. Like, it's so weird they did this in a cutscene. Like, like, we're gonna- that. we're gonna start cool. Rebirth in Calm. What if Rebirth starts in the Nibelheim flashback? Mm -hmm. That could no be way. interesting. A car. It's like the game opens and it's like, you know, right in the flashback. Like, it's Cloud and Sephiroth on the way to Nibelheim. And that's literally where the game starts us off. It looks- why does it look like that? Why is it like a castle? Man, so cool. They, they're there, they're at Calm. And we'll start, we'll start Rebirth in Calm. Oh, we'll get the Nibelheim flashback, it'll be cool. Oh yeah, I forgot this scene! Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Alternate universe. Or maybe this one, or maybe, n I don't know, anymore. It's been a while, huh? Long time no see. How you been? It's amazing how there's the, the characterization Listen. for Zack in this scene hey. is uh, 10 times better than Crisis Core. The whole of Crisis Core. Like, this immediately tells you everything you need to know about him as a character. It's fucking brilliant. I'm back! Like, you get to see his charisma, his care for Aerith, like, his sort of like, his, <laughs> like, his, the charm that he has, like, the, you know, this sort of like, he likes to, he likes to show confidence. That shot remind you of anything? Wait, what shot? What are, we, what are we talking about? The shot of him opening the door. Oh, this here? Like, with the white behind him and stuff? That's, yeah, very Advent Children, right? Alright, here we go. Now, this is the Rebirth trailer. With the context of the OG, the compilation, and a remake replay. We get to see... This trailer. What we've done, that's set in stone. The past is forever. But the future, even if it White Feather been, can be changed. So focus on the future, not the past. He wants to finish what he started. And this is yeah, Renewalheim. He wants to reclaim his birthright. Whoa, it looks really cool, like he can rule over the planet with Genova at his side. What is Sephiroth's end game? So there. I figured it was too late. Wait. What are you implying? That I died? That I'm some kind of imposter? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Tifa's sus! Wait, what? Why are they- why is that a thing? That's not a thing that happened in the original. The- okay. That looks really cool though, that shot. It's fact and what is fiction? You here with me. Well, I really hope this is fiction. I will say that. I will say I really hope this is fiction because no thank you. Five years ago, where are you? What happened to you? I'm trying so hard to find you. Sorry, feel like I failed you. I still don't know what the fuck's going on. 